Welcome to Chapter 15 of the Kinsman Die Podcast, home of fantasy fiction based on Norse mythology that's written and read by me, Matt Bishop. In this podcast, I read my first novel, Kinsman Die, one chapter at a time. Every five chapters, I recap the key plot points and provide some insight into the myths I've referenced in the book, as well as some of the creative choices I've made along the way. In Chapter 11, we were with Loki as he argued, himself with himself, beside the Fronninger. In Chapter 12, Hodor Odin's son had returned home and shared a meal with his significant other, Alara. In Chapter 13, Vidar and his warband were attacked by the Jotun. Vidar used magic, Sather, taught to him by his father to aid the townsfolk. In Chapter 14, Odin and Baldur, along with the Einherjar, rode through the city of Gladsheim and headed out to aid Vidar. And in this chapter, we're back with Vidar, who seems to be headed toward a spirited conflict. Let's do this. Chapter 15. Vidar. Vidar sang in the shields, each pounding hoofbeat, bringing his warband closer to the onrushing enemy. With a flick of his right wrist, he sent out a thread of magic like a fishing line, weaving it through his warband. Just as he had protected the townsfolk, so too would he protect his warriors. Ahead, three black longships, dark sails bellied out before the wind, hurtled toward them across the sea of tall grasses. Like embers, their prows burned a deep red where the ground swelled up to meet them. The taste of ash lay heavy on the wind. Jotun shamans had apparently learned a new way to use Sather. Behind him, his sixty spears pounded across the plains towards the ship in a tight wedge. Garillon was on his right. On his left, Canawin bore the foxhead banner of Vithy. Far behind them, the townsfolk fled alongside the long shadows cast by the setting sun. If his warband could stop the Jotun, those townsfolk should arrive safely in Vithy within a pair of nights. And if he couldn't stop the Jotun? Vidar blew out a long cone of white breath, emptying his lungs, and closed his eyes. Failure was not an option. He sent his mind coursing inward until he saw his fulgia stretched out like one of the great cats on Vithy's golden plains. Her green eyes met his. They reminded him of a wide, deep river whose serene surface hid terrible currents. Which she did, of course. Odin chained Disir to men and women to create the Bersarks. So bound, a Disir became a fulgia, and the spirit's power made a Bersark capable of tremendous feats. But we'll have none of those feats just yet, my Fulgia, Vidar whispered in his mind. She licked her lips in the sleepy way of great cats and leaped high toward him, green eyes gleaming. Startled, he invoked the binding rune that his father had tattooed around his right wrist. The distraction caused him to fumble the words of the witch armor charm he was singing to protect his warband. A gap appeared in the armor. He panicked for a moment, exhaled hard, and then wasted his next cast on covering the hole he'd sung into the armor. His heart jumped a second time when he realized that while he'd focused on his weaving, he'd forgotten his filgia. A hasty glance showed her lying down, eyes bright and watchful. The rune had stopped her upward surge. But what if she'd fought it? His father had said she would test him, would always test him. He must not stumble again. No mistakes. He could balance controlling her while fighting. He had to, even though it wasn't something he'd ever done before. Nor was it something other Bearsarks did, except for his father. But if he failed, then his warband failed, and that meant not only the death of every remaining person from Halls, perhaps, but also a Jotun warband was free to roam unopposed through Vithy. And if their shamans could spin up these black ships from smoke and ash and chain the wind to fill their sails, then they could sail wherever they chose. He had to stop them. Now. The spindle in his hand rattled more loudly. Maybe a quarter of the thread remained. Time to tie it off. He'd need some for the fight itself. He withdrew his silver shears and clipped the thread, then tied it deftly. With that done, he exhaled long and hard and closed his eyes. To his mind's eye, his witch sight, it looked as if every warrior and horse was clad in golden armor. Now he was ready to deal with the fulgia. He invoked the rune tattooed around his right bicep. He looked down at his fulgia and met her emerald eyes again, taut haughtiness in every line of her body. Now, join me. She leaped upward. He rocked in the saddle, feeling as if he were astride a longship bucking on stormy seas. 
He couldn't help but grin, even as he grasped Hrimfaxi's saddle horn and steadied himself. Was this how his brother felt? Mjolnir clutched in an upraised fist and the storm's power hammering through his body. Above the distant thundering of hooves, he heard Garlon call to him, Jarl, we're close! Vidar opened his eyes. The black ships were close enough that he could see the swirling ash and smoke trapped within the net of the shaman's sorcery. He drew his sword and held it high. He let his fulgia rise higher, like water filling a barrel. Not yet, spirit, he whispered, but very soon. If he lost his grip on her, or himself, then he had no doubt she would take over. Odin had warned him repeatedly that accepting a Desir as a spirit follower meant never, ever, letting her take control. If she did, she could do anything she wanted. She could rampage through Vithi or slip her bonds and flee back to the Ganunga Gap for another to claim. But until then, if ever, she was his. If he could keep from becoming hers. Well, folks, that was Chapter 15 of Kinsmen Die. I hope you enjoyed it. Vidar and his warband galloped toward onrushing longships spun of smoke and ash, while Vidar protected his warriors with magic and loosed the fetters upon his fulgia. The next episode will be a recap, and after that, in Chapter 16, we're back with Hoder. If you're interested in supporting the podcast, I have several requests. Please leave a review on whatever podcast app or platform you use. And please share the podcast. That also helps a ton. And finally, please consider supporting my work by buying my books or in some other way. Likes, follows, Patreon locals, etc. I'd also enjoy hearing from you. You can email me at mattbishoprights at gmail.com. And as always, I'm going to read from the Havamal sayings of the High One, Odin. And this next verse definitely influenced how I thought about Vidar, who is the son of a king, though I personally don't like depicting Odin as a king, in at least in the conventional sense. If he is a king, it's of the dead and fallen heroes, of victory, sometimes, of liars and oathbreakers, of seekers after knowledge, and of those who wander. And as we know from Tolkien, not all who wander are lost. And this is the Bellows translation, as always, available on sacred texts. Verse 15. The son of a king shall be silent and wise, and bold in battle as well. Bravely and gladly a man shall go till the day of his death is come.